upper extremity, digits two through five, and hand with Brandy Jones. Anatomy, let's review some anatomy. Hopefully you can see my little pointer. Uh, first we have the distal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the proximal phalanx for digits two, three, four, and five. The first digit has a distal and a proximal phalanx only. Here is your metacarpals, one, two, three, four, and five. The carpals are all here, and we have the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, the hamate. Here we have this scaphoid, um, then the lunate, and the triquetral. And it looks like they did not show the pisiform, but the pisiform would be over here. <clears throat> we have the radius and ulna. Here we have a nice blown up um, view of the carpals. Here's your first digit, your first metacarpal, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Your radius and ulna. We, have, we have the scaphoid, lunate, triquetral, pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium. Here are some mnemonics for you to remember the carpals with. I chose these three. So the one at the top corner here, so long to pinky, here comes the thumb, is one that would you would um, say the carpals in a circle. So you'll start down here at the scaphoid, go um, to your right from left to right, all the way on the bottom row, and then you'll come around right to left in a loop. Um, for that saying. The other two sayings will start at the bottom row with the scaphoid and go from left to right and then go to the top row left to right. So whichever mnemonic works for you, here's a couple. Digits two through five, we have four views, PA, medial oblique, lateral oblique, and lateral. For the medial and lateral obliques, don't forget about anatomical position and they're gonna travel through the hand anatomically. So medial oblique, the beam is traveling medial to lateral side of the hand, and the lateral oblique, the beam is traveling lateral to medial side of the hand. Finger and or digit, PA projection. Here is a picture of positioning the patient for the projection and a image of a accurate positioning of the projection. PA finger analysis practice number one. Analysis. The side of the digit facing the thumb demonstrates greater phalangeal mid-shaft concavity and soft tissue width. The finger was externally rotated. Correction. Internally rotate the finger, placing it flat against the IR. PA finger analysis practice number two. Analysis, the IP and MP joints are closed and the distal and middle foot langes are foreshortened, so the finger was flexed. Correction, you're going to extend the finger and place the palm flat against the IR. If the patient is unable to extend the finger position, um, a AP projection may be need to be used, um, aligning the phalanx of interest to the parallel with the IR or affected joint space perpendicular to the IR. PA oblique projection of the finger. Finger, PA oblique projection. Here is an example of how to position for this oblique projection. And here is an accurate positioning um, x-ray of the projection. PA oblique finger analysis practice number one. Analysis, the soft tissue width and mid-shaft concavity are nearly equal on both sides of the phalanx. The finger was positioned at less than 45 degrees of obliquity for the projection. The IP and MP joints are closed. The finger was not aligned parallel with the IR. Correction, increase the finger obliquity to 45 and keep the finger parallel with the IR. Lateral projection of the finger. Finger lateral projection. Here are examples of accurate positioning for the lateral projection. 
Lateral finger analysis practice number one. Analysis. Concavity is demonstrated on both sides of the middle and proximal phalangeal shafts. The finger was not adequately rotated for this projection. The correction. Increase the degree of finger rotation until the finger is in a lateral projection. Warning, I like to use graphic photos Hand, PA, medial oblique, and lateral. This is a image I found on the internet of some digits that were cut off, and we'll discuss in a little while how we x-ray that. PA projection of the hand. Here are examples of proper positioning, um, accurate positioning for the PA hand. PA hand analysis practice number one. Analysis, there is unequal mid-shaft concavity on either side of the phalanges and metacarpals and uneven spacing of the metacarpal heads. The hand was in slight external rotation. Less than one inch of the distal forearm is included on the projection. Correction, internally rotate the hand until the palm and the fingers are flat against the IR. Open the longitudinal collimation a half inch. I've also included an X on the image so you can see that the positioning was slightly off. PA hand analysis practice number two. Analysis, the IP and CM joints are closed and the phalanges and the metacarpals are foreshortened. The thumb demonstrates in a lateral projection. The hand and fingers were flexed for this projection. Correction, fully extend the patient's hands and fingers and then place them against the IR. If the patient is unable to extend the hand and fingers in the position, then position them in an AP, adjusting the hand as posi and hand position as needed to demonstrate the area of greatest interest without foreshortening. PA hand analysis practice number three. Analysis: the thumb is full in full abduction, and the CR was centered to the second metacarpal phalangeal joint. Um, correction. The position um, the thumb closer to the hand and center this to this third metacarpal joint. PA oblique projection, lateral rotation for, of the hand. Here are examples of proper positioning and the proper projection for the PA oblique hand. PA oblique hand analysis practice number one. Analysis, the mid shafts of the fourth and fifth metacarpals are superimposed. The hand was placed at more than a 45 degree obliquity. The phalanges are foreshortened at the, and the IP joint spaces are closed. The fingers are not positioned parallel with the IR, but were instead used to prop up the hand. Correction, internally rotate the hand until the metacarpals and, and the IR form a 45 degree angle. Extend the fingers, placing them parallel with the IR. A fan lateral projection, lateral medial hand. Here is a accurate positioning and um, accurate projection of the lateral hand fan. Lateral hand analysis practice number one. Analysis, the second through fifth metacarpal mid shafts are not superimposed, and the shortest fifth metacarpal is anterior to the second through the fourth metacarpals. The hand was externally rotated. Correction, internally rotate the hand until the metacarpals are superimposed. Lateral hand analysis practice number two. Analysis, the digits are superimposed and the thumb and the first forefinger are touching. The fingers were not fanned. <clears throat> the fifth metacarpal is the anterior to the second through the fourth metacarpals. The hand was in a slight external rotation. Correction, separate the thumb and the first finger and the fan, the second and third fingers anteriorly and the fourth and fifth posteriorly, separating the fingers as far apart as possible without superimposing the thumb. Internally rotate the hand until the metacarpals are superimposed. Just a bit more of image analysis. Digits. 
I chose this set of images. This is a third digit of the left hand, uh, PA, a lateral oblique, and a lateral um, for this exam. For the PA, you can see it looks pretty good. Um, it looks like we're centered at the pip joint. It looks like we have um, adequate exposure. Um, everything seems to be in place. A nice third marker um, placed on there. It looks like it was the annotated afterwards. Our oblique looks pretty decent as well. We have concavity on the medial side, and there is um, you know, no, no concavity. It's nice and sharp and flat on the other side. Um, so it looks like the oblique is pretty decent in our lateral. Our lateral looks like we're positioned properly. However, look how it's leading to the side. So technically your radiologist has to look to the side, which is not a good thing. You really wanna be able to try to perform all of your images so they look like your first two images here. Um, and then, you know, so turn your whole IR or your box and everything to line up together. Um, you want to be able to um, have the physician be able to look at them going straight across. Uh, you'll see the next set of images where I'll show that. But let's look at the centering. I've made some X's on our images, and you can see it's pretty much over top the pip joint. This one is slightly off, um, and this one looks pretty close to the um, same. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, even though we are do have our box turned, looks like their positioning was pretty decent. And there was the whole collimated area. Okay, moving on. This is a fourth digit of the left hand. Um, all four views, PA, both obliques and lateral were performed. These are um, very nice because you want to show the same amount of information on each image. You want to have them centered properly, which they look like they're pretty close. I have an arrow pointing to the pip joint, so it looks like they're pretty close. The radiologist wants to be able to see it, <coughs> excuse me, as if it's rolling. And this looks like it pretty much is. So I've applied some X's on these, and I don't know where they were centering, but they all seem to be slightly off. Um, they're pretty close to the pip joint, but not exact. Um, so they have some work to do with positioning a little bit. This is the fifth digit, which they did not mark fifth. It's nice that you write on there that it's fifth, even if it's annotated later. However, um, the, the PA, the first image, the marker probably should have been placed at the end um, of the distal digit just because you could have gotten a little bit more collimation in a radiation protection, better image quality. Uh, the oblique is decent. It looks like it could have been oblique slightly more. <clears throat> and the lateral is very nice and it's extended. All are in the same plane, same level. However, you can see this, the positioning is slightly off. They should be at the pip joint going all the way across and they seem to be slightly off on all of them. <clears throat> the next three sides are um, of the hand. This is a left hand. Here is the PA. Um, it looks like they've they're slightly externally rotated. You can see um, how it's starting to lift up. They should make sure you try to place your patient flat against the IR. Here's the X that I placed on for centering. So we could have fixed our centering a little bit. We do have a little more of the radius and ulna than we need to see. So if we would have brought that centering down, it probably would have been a lot better and collimated just a touch. Here's the oblique of the left hand. Um, positioning looks pretty good. The, they're turned pretty well. So three, four, and five um, metacarpals should be slightly overlapped a little bit, and they are. And the um, second and the third are pretty much free, which is good. Um, the digits are extended. The only thing I would say is um, on that second digit, it's kind of like curled down, and you're closing off the joints there. Uh, and um, you're 
looks like they have turned like the hand so the radius and ulna are not straight i would try to straighten that up so you can see some of those carpal bones a little bit better we place the x on here and stuttering's pretty good Here is a lateral and centering um, looks like it's slightly off just from eyeballing it. We'll place the X on it in just a minute. Everything looks like it's in lateral position. The metacarpals are superimposed. It would be nice if the radius and ulna was superimposed a little bit, but if they were to straighten that hand out instead of like leaning, um, I think it would be a lot better. Let's see what the X shows. Yeah, the X definitely shows that they are <laughs> definitely off on the centering. It should be over top of the second a little bit better. <clears throat> this is the third digit of the right hand. I chose this because it had a foreign body. I just wanted to make sure you guys know it's important to try to include all of the foreign body for the radiologist. They can look at the projection and see which way it's going. Um, this looks like there's a little more anatomy than we need. Did they do that because they were centering at the foreign body? Um, I'm not sure, but it's centering should be at the um, hip joint. And we have the PA, both obliques and the lateral, um, and they all look like they're pretty decent the straight across the same. Um, techniques look good. Okay, so coming back to that um, image when I said we're going to talk about it later, uh, when are you, what happens when an appendage gets cut off? Well, this is an image that I took, and here we are. We have um, somebody that accidentally got their finger cut off. Um, it's on ice. If they are not queasy or anything of the sort, um, you just grab it out of the bucket of ice and stick it on the end of your um, image. It's very hard to get that small little cutoff digit with, um, with a decent technique that small in the center of your IR. So it's nice to be able to place it on here. However, not every patient can handle that if they are, you know, not mentally um, able to handle the blood and that kind of stuff. Um, this was wrapped up. It was wrapped up in gauze, as you can see and inside a bag. Um, I took it off ice for a second and quickly placed it on just the PA. Um, you couldn't tell which way it was facing, so obviously it doesn't look like it's attached um, in any way, but usually they stick them at the ends um, and take a picture. So this is the um, PA. You could tell he's slightly um, externally rotated a little. Here is the oblique. Um, patient was in a lot of pain, had a hard time uh, turning. So it looks like I over extended just a little bit. So you have three, four, and five starting to come over top of each other, superimposed here. Well, they should be a little bit separated, a little bit better. And um, my hand this looks like it's starting to turn lateral down in the carpal area. Here is the lateral. He had a hard time trying to separate the digits, obviously. Um, he was in a lot of pain and did the best he could. The metacarpals are superimposed, radius and ulna are almost superimposed, could be slightly more. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. Here are the sources of the pictures.